Laura Hetmanek, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Very excited to talk to you because you are the director of the Eugene M. Lang Entrepreneurship Center. You're also a proud alum of Columbia Business School. Is that right? Yes, I am. I'm a huge Columbia Business School fan. I was class of 1999, Cluster B. Um, I was an art history major in undergrad. Um, I didn't know really where it was going, but um, I worked in a number of marketing roles and was on the founding team of three different marketing agencies throughout the beginning of my career. Uh, and through those agencies, I really eventually found myself working with a lot of founders um, and early stage entrepreneurs and found that that was something that um, I really loved the energy and the optimism of being around entrepreneurs. So it was always something that I kind of sought out, um, started just out of my own curiosity, going to demo days around the city and talking to entrepreneurs to kind of s just hear their ideas and, and um, wanted to see where things were going in terms of technology and AI and how things, the world was going to change purely out of interest. Um, and it just happened that one day this job sort of fell in my lap. Uh, a colleague from Columbia Business School, Jeremy Kagan, had taken over the Lang Center and I heard about it through mutual friends um, that he was hiring. And so I met with him and here I am. And I'm, I'm thrilled to be back at Columbia working with the students and alumni. And it's it's been a, a really wonderful journey. I've been here for about three and a half years now. Well, the Lang Center is the heart and the center of all things entrepreneurship at Columbia Business School. Can you tell us about what is the Lang Center? What's its purpose? What's the mission? Yeah, uh, I would s add to um, being the heart of entrepreneurship, I would also add innovation and venture capital here. And so we, we help students and alumni launch their businesses, invest in startups, and scale those startups as well. And through that, um, we sponsor curriculum in both venture capital and entrepreneurship, and also a number of different programs, events, and resources for both students and alumni in addition to that curriculum. So the paths, tra uh, there is a very specific path with the curriculum, launch, invest, and scale. scale. Yeah. Um, and the co-curriculars go along with those uh, support. So our, our mission is really um, to create an opportunity for everyone that comes through through Columbia Business School to know what it's like to be an entrepreneur, to um, learn how to innovate and think big, um, ideas, come up with ideas that change the world, ultimately that will create jobs and uh, create positive change in the world. And that's really what we want to do. And even if, let's say, students come through the program, they pursue a startup and they, you know, not everyone's gonna start a billion dollar company but if you have the experience of thinking and being and acting like an entrepreneur, you can take that to many different parts of your life. No matter what it is that you do, you can work in an innovation role, role in a, a big company. Um, you might innovate in your own life. You might work at a startup, um, or you might start your own business. And all those are things that we encourage and teach. So let's talk about the curriculum for a second, right? So you said launch, invest, scale. If a student or a prospective student is looking to come here and let's say they just have an idea, mm -hmm. then obviously the launch uh, courses are the right thing for them. Mm -hmm. But what about individuals who already have companies right now? Do, mm -hmm. Is there a set way of going through the program that they have to go or can they sort of dive into the classes that make most sense for them where their company actually is? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. You can you can dive in anywhere. I would say most entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs that come um, do not yet have a, have a company. Um, and actually, I would start by saying people do come in with an idea, but we kind of ask you to just take a step back and think about don't, don't fall in love with your idea yet. <laughs> fall in with, love with the problem. Define your problem and iterate on solutions, talk to everybody that you can, take the coursework, talk to your classmates, talk to your professors. We have coaches, we have a lot of resources for you to vet that idea. Uh, so what we really encourage is, is students to come in with an idea. That, um, we often hear people come in and say, I have an idea, I need to build it, I need an engineer. Yeah. And what we say is, okay, focus on your core classes, first term, because it's a lot of work. Um, and then, but think about problems you wanna solve. Talk to everybody you can about it and take your coursework. And through your coursework, you will learn how important customer discovery hmm. is. Don't just 
put a lot of resources and money into something that you haven't vetted out as an idea that has scalability and that people are willing to put money behind, right? So you can, you can do your discovery by doing a lot of interviews um, to actual customers, potential customers. You can, uh, what we also encourage is creating a, an MVP, a minimum viable product. Mm -hmm. That minimum viable product could be a piece of paper with a drawing. It could be a cardboard box with uh, <laughs> stickers and, and glitter, glitter, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you can put in front of a customer and say, okay, how do you feel about this? How do you interact with it? What would you do with it? Um, is this going to be valuable to you? Well, so how do you go about making those connections? Because that that is so much of the value of you know being a part of the Columbia Business School community is that you have this access to all these different perspectives and minds and thinking and 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 and, and everything that goes into really coming up with great solutions. Yeah. Are there set ways in which the Lang Center facilitates making these connections? Connections with customers or connections with professors, with yeah. alumni, with with with. Uh, with businesses, with other entrepreneurs, whomever it might be? Yeah, the, the answer is yes to all. Okay. <laughs> um, and I think most people who come through the school will tell you that the network that they have built has been incredible. Uh, and there's both formal and informal ways to do that, right? So you take your courses, um, that's wonderful. You work in groups, you get to know each other, but also look both ways. Um, Go to happy hours. Talk to talk to your students. Everybody here has an incredible background and um, something something of value to offer. Right. So there's that informal talking to your classmates, going to your professor office hours. Come to the Lang Center. We're yeah. here on the sixth floor, sixth floor in Geffen. Stop by and and uh, we welcome we welcome walk-ins all the time, and we're happy to talk to you. One of one of the main reasons why we exist is to connect you to other coaches or other students or professors that that might be able to help you with what you're trying to do and, and I just wanted to mention we have a formal programs where uh, we have a number of accelerator type programs where we will put you in groups with other students that are doing something similar so there's peer support mm. and then we have a couple coaching programs that are one-on-one -on -one. so you can you can go and book half an hour with um, mostly alumni but not not all and they, they tend to be very accomplished entrepreneurs and venture capitalists who just come back to to give back and to spend time with students um, and help them think through their questions. Is that kind of what the Star Startup Lab is about? Columbia Startup Lab is an incredible program. It's been around for about six years. It's down in Soho. Uh, and it's for recent graduates of Columbia Business School as well as other schools around the university. Columbia Business School has about half the seats down there. And the, you are sitting alongside um, other entrepreneurs from Columbia College mm -hmm. and SIPA and the law school and the and engineering school and it's an incredible community um, of sort of like cross-pollinated ideas and skills. Um, is, is it the goal? Yes, it is um, on, its, on its face. It's a co-working space. So the school will subsidize your space for at least a year. You can stay longer um, and you get a desk and it's not, but it's not just co-working. It is almost, um, it is close to an accelerator program in that there is, there's this wonderful community. Um, there are coaches or professors that sit down there giving office hours. There are many professionals that come and give workshops. And it's um, very, very lively in terms of uh, like social opportunities down there. It's exciting. Yeah. Hey, you've mentioned the engineering school um, a, a few times. And I was reading that there is a dual degree coming out the yes. between the MBA between the business school and the engineering school is that right? Yes, okay. exactly. And I think it's perfect timing. We're very excited about it. Um, I've seen since I've been at the school for three years, the students actually have become a little more technical over the time that they've been coming in. The entrepreneurs, more and more students have some sort of technical background, whether it's their undergrad or they took a boot camp. Um, which has been quite interesting and important um, to have both a technical and a business background, I think is really powerful. But this sort of formalizes that. And I think uh, Dean McGlaris has really, really seen that as the future. Uh, we're gonna be welcoming our first class fall of 2023. So they'll be taking both MBA and engineering core classes. It's interesting when I, um, what I've been seeing is a type of students that are entrepreneurs at the business school versus engineering is quite different. A lot, a lot of engineers will come in 
with a product that they sort of discover and, and they think, okay, how can I commercialize this? This could be really cool. And the business school students will come with an idea and say, okay, how can I find a product? So putting them together is actually quite interesting and people that can kind of think on both sides. Um, so that's that's one thing. I think the combination of those approaches is, is very powerful. But uh, you know, as we as we all know, on a bigger scale, tech is driving change in absolutely every single industry, only much accelerated by the pandemic. Uh, so it's it's it is just the most critical and important time to be to be um, bringing those skills in and helping identify and give resources to the most promising types of tech entrepreneurs. So we have, uh, at Columbia Business School, we have some uh, pretty uh, well-known companies that have been founded by alumni. So we mm -hmm. think of, you know, from uh, from Siggy's, Compass, ZocDoc. How are we bringing this learning and the experiences of our alumni mm -hmm. back to the school yes. for them to share back with the students yes. so that hopefully they too can find themselves in a position where they are at the helm of, you know, pretty significant yeah. and valuable uh, startups. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm very glad you asked that. In, in my view, our alumni are our most single important asset. And we try very hard to build those relationships with our alumni at all stages, whether they're just starting out and building a company or whether they have exited for a billion dollars or more. Um, and so we've been really working hard to create those relationships and engage them back with the school and to provide um, a sort of virtuous cycle of bringing them to campus, having them speak to students, sharing their journey along the way, and giving them the inspiration and the energy that, that they had. Um, and the students, I think, are um, very excited and motivated and appreciate the time that the alumni give back. Uh, I, sometimes I say that I feel like sometimes if the Lang Center, if, if all we did was put our alumni and students <laughs> in a room and we just stepped out, I think we would have done half our job. John Stein from Betterman was just here for CBS Startups Week. He knew he wanted to solve some of the friction that was going on in financial services. He tried many different things, pivoted a number of times, got a lot of feedback, people telling him he was crazy, it was never going to work. And he, he kept going because he knew there was – an opportunity, yeah. um, but he didn't know how at first to solve it. So he kept trying things, seeing to, to see what stuck, and ultimately he built, um, you know, Betterment, which is which is worth um, I don't I don't know how much, but several <laughs> billion lot. dollars. He said. <laughs> a lot, <laughs> very well. So just hearing his story and hearing his frustrations, the times where we're especially challenging, and you know how how did you find it in you to keep going when it seemed like everyone was telling you this is not going to work. Hearing that's really, really important yeah. to, the, to aspiring entrepreneurs. You mentioned CBS Startup Week. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? We are yes. recording in December. Just happened maybe about six to eight weeks ago. Yes. Saw all the posts on Instagram. It looks like a ton of fun, a great event for people to meet, connect with each other, pitch their ideas. Mm -hmm. Let me not let me not, let me not lead you too much. Like yep. tell us tell us a little bit about well, we it. Well, ha we had all that. Um, it is something we've done before. The last time was 2019, and of course, because of the pandemic, we sort of um, put it off or had it in lighter forms over the last couple of years. So this is the first year that it's been back, um, and it's we just made it bigger and better than ever. We were really trying to create a big moment. At the Javits Center, is that right? Or? Partly at the Javits okay. Center. Okay. So what it was, we had a. Uh, four or five on-campus events in which we brought back entrepreneurs like Elliot Robinson, who's a partner at Bessemer Ventures, um, John Stein, founder yeah. of Betterment, who I mentioned. We had David Kim, who's the founder of CityMD, among several other ventures, uh, and some professors, as well as even student entrepreneurs coming to speak to students um, and on panels. And we hit topics that um, overlapped with kind of the pillars and, tr and ongoing trends. One was... was uh, healthcare and access. Yeah. Um, we had a talk on venture capital and diversity, investing diversity, and we we had a healthcare panel that was maybe our most well attended on. Uh, um, I'm sorry, a fashion fashion and sustainability panel, hmm. which we're tackling. Um, we had four entrepreneurs talking about different ways they were tackling sustainability and fashion. 
So those were our on-campus events, and to add to that, we had, uh, we, we um, thanks to the Columbia Business School marketing team, we sponsored Tech Day at Javits Center, which is the biggest startup conference in the world or in, in the U.S., maybe. Um, mm. So It's big. Huge, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> huge conference Either center, way, Javits. Big. It's big. <laughs> We had over 40 Columbia Business School booths. Oh, wow. Um, some people came to us and said, I th- you know, it seems like Columbia is <laughs> half the, the startups here. Um, so we had CBS Alley, about 40 different startups exhibiting. Um, at least, I think it was 15,000 people came through. And it was not just Columbia community, of course. It's open to anybody. Startup um, Tech Day was open to, to everybody. So that was very exciting where um, students alumni got to – talk about their ideas, what they're doing, get live feedback, practice their pitch. Yeah. And and a couple a couple times, a couple of startups told us they signed their first customer while oh, there. Um, and a number of students also had follow-up meetings with investors. So uh, really, really great feedback and visibility for our founders. Um, and we also had a tabling event on campus for people that were selling product, CBS founded products, on, and that was – for the CBS community, people could come by and and purchase for themselves or for the holidays. That's so exciting. I've got to ask you, I mean, how does that make you feel, right? Because here you are, uh, director of the Lang Center. This is uh, a primary mission to really make yeah. Columbia Business School heart of New York City, a destination for entrepreneurship, you know, um, investment for um, make it a destination for entrepreneurship and investment and venture capital and you're seeing all the success coming out. We named those yeah. companies. You're seeing them, you know, the CBS Alley, great footprint at Tech Day. How does that make you feel that we're really starting to hit on our goals yeah, as, I a, mean, as a program? Um, of course, I'm super excited and proud. And I, there's no way I could have done any of this without the Lang Center team who worked extremely hard all fall was very very busy getting ready um number of different things going on a lot of planning went into it so the 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 laying center team worked extremely hard um i mean one thing i would point out is that the entrepreneurship as a pillar of columbia business school in a way it's always been there right for the last 10 years we've seen over 700 venture-backed startups come out of columbia either students or alumni uh, over 120 of those have exited. They've raised t- collectively over $23 billion oh, wow. in institutional financing. It's just, it's always been there. Um, the school and Dean McGlaris are, are kind of shining a bigger light on it right now and accelerating um, that entrepreneurship spirit. Well, what do you think it says to prospective students, to maybe alumni who are looking to get into the entrepreneurship space yeah. that it is one of our key pillars. Yeah, oh, and I forgot to mention during CBS Startups Week, our our end of week event was an alumni networking event, where I talked about um, it, it. was it, it was a it was a social event where we brought, brought back all the alumni in our kind of like laying orbit. Yeah. Um, it's many most of them were founders, but I, I mentioned some of these stats. We gave away product from some of our our founders and. I had a lot of people coming up just um, very excited. They didn't know there was so much entrepreneurship coming out of CBS. Um, and, you know, some of the products, and we talked about Mac Weldon, for instance. Uh, we had Thursday Boots. People didn't yeah, just didn't yeah, know they yeah, are CBS founded yeah. companies. So we just kind of have to talk about it. And so, what do you think that, what do you think that signals out oh. into the market? Yeah. So, for alumni, I think, um, I think they become even more proud of CBS and encouraged, um, especially if they are a founder getting started. It's quite a lonely journey, right? Yeah. Um, so for them to know, oh, wow, this is a very active ecosystem um, at CBS. There are people that I can reach out to. Uh, the, the school is supportive. I think it means a lot yeah. when you know that other people are going through it. There's successes, there's failures, there's pivots. It's all there, and it's all okay, right? Because you kind of you need to know that you're part of a bigger something bigger. For students and uh, and especially prospective students, our our hope is that we 
reach a lot of prospective students who are thinking about business school and are interested in entrepreneurship or venture capital, and that Columbia is on their radar mm -hmm. um, because they see that we're serious about it and that we have amazing opportunities and resources here. Laura, so we have the Columbia Startup Lab, and we also just talked about the Columbia Startup Week as mm -hmm. well, Columbia Business School Startup Week. We also just talked about CBS Startup Week. There's also Columbia Build Lab. Can you tell us a little bit about what this is? Yeah. Um, Columbia Build Lab is a program that's about three years old now, and it is a very cross-campus, well-integrated. It is one of the most well-integrated programs that I know about at Columbia. So what it does is we take Columbia Business School founders, early stage founders who are current students, and we match them with engineers from all around the university, from four different schools around the university. And those engineers spend about 10 to 15 hours per week with the founders that they are matched to. Their skills are matched to each, each founder that is in the program. And they help, help build out their prototypes and, and early, early um, minimum viable products to really get those, those um, businesses launched. So that's been incredibly successful. Um, some engineers have stayed on and become co-founders, or they stayed on after the students graduate to work for their startups. Uh, and you know, no matter what, the engineers get incredible experience working for a startup. They build up their credentials and their resume, and the business school students don't pay a thing for <laughs> world-class engineers at Columbia. I mean, it just shows the power of the connections, not just at Columbia Business School, but Columbia University as a whole. Absolutely. You know, I want to talk about maybe some of the um, more challenging areas around entrepreneurship. And it's, it, and, and I'm particularly interested in, in hearing how the Lang Center is really working to support historically marginalized yeah. uh, founders, mm -hmm. you know, women, black, African-American. Um, recent stats as of today that I looked up is uh, black and African-American make up approximately 10% of founders. Yep. Uh, women still don't earn 100% of what men are making. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that we are doing as a school, as a program to help correct you know, those mm -hmm. statistics? Yeah, so we've been working hard, um, over the, especially over the last few, few years, when we do bring back speakers and alumni, that we are sure to, to represent a diversity of viewpoints um, by gender or by ethnic background and uh, fully represent underrepresented mi minority so that um, they can come and speak to these issues and the, the students that come and hear them speak um, see, see themselves, themselves yeah, yeah. And, and feel they can see their path and feel comforted in, in their journey. The amazing thing is without having a specific program to increase diversity of entrepreneurs in the past year, 19% of our funding has gone to black founders, 43% has gone to female founders. Okay. So many times the average of um, like the VC, the, the VC industry as a whole. And do you see that being um, a priority for the venture capital world to make sure that they are investing N across the board, across the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it is um, the interest is there, the trends are there. Whether we're seeing it translate into, um, we we see it translating definitely into more meetings and more seed funding, more early funding for historically underrepresented groups. Well, whether that's going to translate into um, the later stage of funding, like. C stage and D stage, mm -hmm. uh, I think that remains to be seen. But there, there's progress, probably not enough. Um, we do see that changing. Our venture, our venture capital program is a two-year student programming, incredibly competitive. Um, we had almost about 80 students compete for 15 spots this year. Um, we had um, about about 50 percent of them are female. Hmm. So, and these these were these were blinded applications. We, didn't tr we don't have a mandate that we need to have this or that percentage allocated to certain groups. This is, this is simply what worked out. So the more that we can support a fem female and upper underrepresented um, venture aspiring venture capitalists, they 
will have different viewpoints in who they invest in when they go out in the world and become investors. So, Laura, you know, as we're talking about historically marginalized founders, I know from our conversation with Dean McGlarus when we talked to him back in the spring of 2022 that part of the goal of Manhattanville was to make sure that we are doing things to give back to the community. Now, many people in the city, many people in the Harlem community, many people from around the world probably have great ideas, want to become uh, entrepreneurs or launch their companies, whatever it might be, but they may not have the access to you know, the Lang Center community but, or as a formal student. Is there programming that's happening from the Lang Center or from the school that can help these uh, these individuals really learn and, and potentially launch their, their idea? Yeah, it's a great question, and I, I know very important to the school, especially with our move to Manhattanville, to, to really integrate and support in the community. The Lang Center uh, supports specifically Columbia Business School students and alumni, but I would really encourage you to reach out and speak with the Columbia Harlem Small Business Development Center. They're doing wonderful work in working with local vendor vendors um, to bring them on campus. They have programs where they take in local entrepreneurs and help train them and give them additional resources and coaching. So a really, really wonderful program. Lara, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a chance to give an opportunity to talk about the Lang Center's podcast. Here you are talking with us on Columbia BizCast, but can you share a little bit about the podcast that you all just launched, Startup Alley? Yes, thank you. Uh, yes, we launched our new pad- podcast series Um, Right during CBS Startups Week, actually, we have three episodes of three wonderful founders who have shared their stories with us. Um, We've featured David Olk, who's a founder of Shopkeep, Uh, Ju Ru, who founded Hero Cosmetics, which also makes Mighty Patch. Um, Subsequently, after we spoke to her, her company sold for over $600 million. And... um, Connor Wilson, who's a founder of Thursday Boots, which I'm wearing right now. Oh, wow. Very so exciting. we can, um, you can find the Startup Alley podcast. Wherever on, you get your podcasts. Wherever you get your right? podcasts. <laughs> Apple, uh, Spotify, et cetera. Yeah, of course. And we'll make sure to link to it in our show notes so everybody wants to take a listen. Excellent. Thank you so much. Final questions for you here. What advice do you have to anyone who is listening that is considering becoming an entrepreneur? Um, I would start by saying there's never the perfect time to be an entrepreneur. It's always going to be very, very hard. So if you have an idea, you have a problem that you just really, really want to solve and you think there's opportunity there, dive in. And it doesn't mean you have to quit your job and spend a lot of money. It means that you start talking to people, trying out solutions. Looking cardboard at boxes, right? right cardboard try, yeah. boxes. <laughs> look at whether, what people are doing as an alternative right now. And See if, you know, do your, start doing some research, go into stores, um, talk to, talk, talk to people, talk to, talk to your friends and family, talk to potential customers. And then when you're ready, it's, it's, you can do it as a side hustle. Um, You can, you know, do it in a a small test environment. It's pretty easy to get a campaign going on Google AdWords or Facebook slash Instagram. You can test messaging on there. You can test um, impact on what you're selling to see what kind of reaction you get. Take it one step at a time. Uh, I would say don't wait. If, if it's something, if you have the bug and it's something that you really want to do, I'd say go for it. Um, so that's one thing. I would also say, uh, I said earlier in the interview that, um, again, focus on the problem and not a particular solution because a lot of times people will get very, very married to their solution and have trouble sort of, um, breaking out, a little breaking bit. out yeah, of it, yeah. and like you, you don't realize it, but you ask other, you ask potential customers leading question, leading questions, which are leading to your solution, and you want to try to remove that as far as possible. So focus on the problem. Um, and again, I want to repeat, like, do not spend time and resources on building a solution, especially like hiring engineers or whatever, whatever it might be, making hardware before you have vetted out a solution as far as you can to find that product market fit. Yeah. So. If I was to ask you to look into your crystal ball about what's ahead in 2023, what would you say? What do you see? <laughs> well, I do want to mention that our strategic priorities, as far as the Lang Center at Columbia Business School, um, fall into what I call A, B, and C. A, I've talked about a couple of times, it's Amplify. Mm-hmm. Um, CBS Startups Week, for instance. Let's keep talking about uh, our successes and our ideas and the ways that our students and alumni are already changing the world. 
B is build, so we're looking at our prog- a close look at our programming and tripling and doubling down on what we know that works. For instance, our, um, the program that, we s- that started the Lang Center is called the Lang Fund. We have our own VC fund, which we've opened up to alumni. So we have three cycles of a year, which we use to invest in graduating student and alumni companies. I'm happy to say um, quite recently we've had a gift of $2.5 million from an alum by the name of Devin Berger. And that has gone into the Lang Fund so we could write bigger checks to the companies that we are, we are supporting. Um, and and um, that fund is actually called an opportunity fund and will focus on female and under, underrepresented minority founders. Um, so tripling, doubling down on the programs that we know are effective and that work over time. And then C is community. Mm-hmm. Um, as I, as I said, it's uh, the community at Columbia Business School is incredibly strong. I, as an alum, have um, stayed in touch with many people, both personally and professionally. It's um, People have supported me in my career along the way. And uh, I think it's the Columbia community exists in many different ways, but it's a little bit siloed. So what we want to do is keep building those relationships, but also launch programs to build on that community in it's a more formal way. So those uh, entrepreneurs can meet the alumni that might be doing something further along and can help each other. Uh, and that entrepreneurs can look and see the different skills around the university, bring them on board as potential founders, like at, like a, Clum- a Columbia Startup Lab, yeah. the physical uh, space downtown, but on a, on a much larger scale. Well, it's all yeah. very, very exciting. I mean, congratulations on all the success that's happening. Um, I'm glad that we can contribute to talking about it, right? To making sure that people know about all the success that's going on, the Amplify part of A, B, and C. Really appreciate your time, Laura. Thank you for so much for sharing some insights on the entrepreneurship and innovation pillar. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you, Fahad.